What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with a series of Destiny 2 updates. So we are going to talk about the final assault, the return of the Undying Mind, and lots of feedback about this final event on the Season 8 roadmap. We do have a couple of responses from Bungie on feedback about Final Assault. On top of this, we're going to round up some of the minor bits of news some future seasonal updates, bugs, season ranks, and more in this video. So guys, as always, if you enjoy this one, a rating below is very much appreciated. Also, feel free to jump in and give some of your thoughts on what we'll discuss in this video, but otherwise, let's get into it. And so firstly, let's talk about Final Assault. So over the past few weeks, we have been keeping our eye on Ikora's portal in the tower. And this week, she's finally finished it. And of course, we finally get to fight the Undying Mind. And it's safe to say that there has been a fair amount of disappointment in the community about the Undying Mind and the Final Assault. And naturally, with this being a roadmapped piece of content, there definitely was a degree of hype for Final Assault. But essentially, now that it's actually dropped, it is basically a boss swap, right? Where we once had the big Vex Minotaur dude, I forget his name, we now have have the Undying Mind in its place, and the rest of the actual game mode pretty much stays the same from start to finish, including the kind of core mechanics for the boss itself. So the next thing that players would really be looking for, of course, is the reward, and basically it's an emblem. In addition, there are the triumphs needed to actually unlock the title, so congrats to any new Undying Guardians out there, but otherwise there is no exceptional reward for the final assault, and on top of the lack of mechanics or gameplay variety for it, I feel like there definitely is a lack of narrative development at the moment around it as well. I say at the moment because with time actually remaining in the season, I don't want to jump to the conclusion that there's going to be no more story to kind of lead us into Season of Dawn. But for now, Akora tells us that her and Zavala have been testing the portal that she's building, and now we need to defeat the Undying Mind to control the Garden Vex and ultimately stop them pouring onto the moon. But yeah, once we've actually defeated the Mind, that's kind of it. And so, on a number of levels, Final Assault probably hasn't delivered what folks had really hoped we'd get. And there have been a couple of responses to some of the feedback from Cosmo and DMG. So, Cosmo said, sorry that you found it disappointing. We'll pass along everyone's feedback to the team. And let us know what you liked, didn't like, and what you think could be improved in future seasons. DMG also said, would you have preferred this not to appear on the roadmap, but rather have just played it out in the game? And what other feedback do we have on the activity itself? And I think generally speaking, the biggest point of feedback is going to be the reward. I said it very early on in the season, and a lot of other people have said it as well. Wouldn't it have been cool to get something like a Margot Loop or some other unique reward dropped from Final Assault? And I think if there was an awesome quest or a farmable drop which people really wanted, then sure, a few of us would still say that the gameplay was kind of the same, but at least the reward was really cool, right? I think it's the same for the story as well. If there was kind of a cutscene, reveal, or major development, then it definitely would have made things more interesting. And then, of course, the gameplay could have totally been more varied, but that would have held pretty minimal value if there wasn't a reward for it. So I think that's generally where the community is at, but be sure to give us your thoughts below. And for any folks wondering why there's been such a negative response in general, I think it's worth remembering that on top of the fact that this is roadmapped content, there definitely has been a buildup over the course of the season. We had many weeks of dialogue, we were seeing that portal come together, and players have been expecting this kind of continuing narrative. And I think in general, that build-up hasn't really paid off when it comes to Final Assault. And so once again, give us your thoughts on that. But this is triggering another kind of pretty big conversation. And the other question that really remains is what are we going to see in Season of Dawn? And the other big question would be, is the Undying content, and remember this is separate to the Shadowkeep content, but is the Undying content specifically, and what we could see on the roadmap here, for example, is this the kind of content that we should really expect to get in Season of Dawn? And I think if so, then I can definitely understand players being worried about that. But as we've mentioned before, it's possible that next season won't be as minimal as Undying on its own, because of course Bungie knew that we'd have Shadowkeep and Undying combined for this drop, so let us know what you think, but we've only got three weeks remaining of this season, so presumably Bungie are going to have more to say soon, and once again, on the subject of Undying stuff, we aren't quite at the end of the season just yet, and there could be other content or kind of secrets to enjoy at some point, but as we've seen, it can definitely be worth tempering expectations. And before we finally move on, a couple of random Undying mind things to mention. The broken powerful drop for the Vex Offensive does affect the Final Assault as well, so we're even missing the powerful reward which should be dropping from Final Assault. And another random thing, but I think Bungie might have stolen Pagori's boss weapons from the Menagerie, but forgot to rename them, as if you actually die to the flying harpy squid type things in the Final Assault from the Undying Mind, you'll notice that it does say it was Pagori that actually killed you, so there's a random thing you may not have noticed. Now though, let's mention some other roundups, info about future updates, and more feedback from the community. Something that I think players should get ready for, and maybe Bungie are going to talk about this some point in the next few days. 
But Luke Smith had previously said that to solve for how our community plays Destiny, we are planning to allow season ranks to be purchased as a catch-up mechanic late in the season. And they had said a couple of different times that the plan is to sell these catch-up ranks in the final two weeks of Season 8. So if that is to be the case, then Season Rank Purchase theoretically is going to start either next week or the week after at some point before Season of Undying ends. I'd imagine Bungie will kind of prep us for that before they actually do it, but there's definitely going to be some feedback about it when it actually happens. So something to bear in mind that could pop up as an option next week. For other updates that we'll get in the future though, a couple of days back we spoke about a buff to the Anarchy drop rate which is expected in a future update. Of course this is the raid exotic for Scourge of the Past, and apparently it's going to have its drop rate increased to a total drop rate of 10%, which is the same amount that we have for the 1000 voices. So if that's an exotic that you've been missing, hopefully you can benefit from that update when it drops, but stay tuned for patch notes first. And of course this is on top of the fact that we do have a confirmed nerf to One-Eyed Mask and Recluse, and those will be dropping in the update that kicks off Season of Dawn, as well as that buff to Xenophage. In the game right now, any of you guys who have noticed kind of lagginess, frame lockups and things like that inside of the UI, if you're going through your inventory or equipping stuff on weapons, sometimes things can be a little bit laggy, and Cosmo confirmed that this is a known issue they are currently investigating. So hopefully there'll be a fix for this one soon. There's a fairly unusual issue where masterworked versions of the play of the game Grenade Launcher actually had their masterworks changed and reset to zero at the start of the season. Bungie did investigate this and Cosmo has dropped an update and has said that it looks like something that they're not going to be able to fix. So unfortunately, if you have got a play of the game that you still use and the masterwork got messed up at the start of this season, it's not something that Bungie can automatically update. So I'm not sure if there's any way to fix the broken stat or whether you can remasterwork them. And on the subject of players talking about equipping certain artifact mods to exotic weapons, somebody made a post about it and DMG recognized this and said that it'll note the lack of variety specifically. And so essentially, hopefully, Bungie will be looking into the possibility of adding some more of those artifact mods to exotic weapons and things like that in the future. If you are curious about the inventory of featured items that we're going to see over the final three weeks of Season 8, JP Deathblade actually posted a datamine list of what we're going to get. So bear in mind that this has the potential to change if Bungie update it, but we can see the inventory currently available for this week. And then the middle row of items is what we're going to get next week. The two mystery silver items should include the four degrees of separation and the quality cut. And then for week 10, the final week right there, you can see all of the stuff offered for Bright Dust, but also the Machina form and the Regal Howl will fill those mystery slots, which are actually the kind of shuffled slots for those weeks. So if you're looking to collect any other stuff from Eververse inside of this season, then I'm sure you can spot some of the icons and items that you may be looking for right there. I'll also link Deathblade's Reddit post down below as he just posts some very useful stuff. Some of the bits of feedback that players have posted to Bungie though, firstly Cosmo recognised and said that he'll continue to let the team know that loadout functionality in the game is a common request from the community, and so maybe the ability to actually save certain setups as loadouts could definitely be pretty cool. Cosmo's also pushed feedback to the team that players would like to be able to change the reticle colour on console, and they've been taking a lot of feedback over the course of the season for potential changes inside of seasonal artifact mods, the season pass and all of those kind of seasonal systems specifically, so when it comes to reveals for the next season, as opposed to kind of big spoilers and things like that. Hopefully some of the first things that we'll hear about will be changes to those systems. Quick shout here though, if you want to show some community support to Bungie, they have been nominated for the Community Support Award at the Game Awards, and I'd say it's definitely one of the positives in the community in general, and something that Bungie have generally done a pretty good job of, at least in terms of the community front, right, those community managers and teams. Moving all the business stuff and the game stuff aside, they definitely do do an awful lot for the community and for the game, so personally it's something that I'm going to vote for. And so I'll link that down below. Also guys, I'm curious, are any of you planning to try Google Stadia out now that it's actually available? Seems like you have to have some pretty good internet to really take advantage of it, but if you're curious, you can see a bunch of IGN gameplay that includes Destiny on Stadia, so that might be something to check out. But for now guys, that's going to round up everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Bit of a mixed bag of stuff, but we are at that end point of the season where we've got a lot of conversation about the content we've had and what's coming up. But really we're waiting for more proper details from Bungie, so I'll be keeping you posted with all of that stuff when we get it. And if you're new around here, be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you up to date. But otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, guys, our rating below is very much appreciated. Also, be sure to give us any of your thoughts in the comments section. And for now, thanks for tuning in and whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day. This is our chance to kill the Undying Mind for good and contain the Vex on Luna. The portal works. Zavala and I tested it ourselves two dozen times. That's two dozen timelines where the Undying Mind will never return. Still, hundreds, thousands more timelines remain. 
It will take all of us working together to stop this. Gather your fire team. Fine tune your loadouts. It's time for us to do what we guardians do best. Get in there and fight. <laughs>